Today we're going to be looking at modern plaster techniques, a new way to make old walls look beautiful again. This is a mix of old style plaster with some modern materials and techniques for an easy and cost effective way to repair old plaster walls seamlessly that look just like the original plaster. You guys have been uh, asking for a video for modern plaster for a while. I've lost my voice today, but I'm still going to try and do this. Uh, I've shown you how to mix it already. We've got our modern, modern plaster here, which is a mix of the joint compound, the near plaster, and sand for whatever texture you need, or you don't even need the sand if you don't want to. And uh, we're just going to put it up on the wall here, and I'll show you some of the techniques. Um, this is your hawk, um, and this is your trowel. Very important. This is not a drywall trowel. Drywall trowel has a little scoop in the middle of it to leave more, like if you're going across a seam, it'll leave more right in the middle. This is a plastering trowel, so it's completely flat all the way across. Helps you get a good, nice, even coat on there. We've come through the wall. We scraped all the high spots, any chippy places. We've done a little bit of filling of some holes and a little bit of patching for some of the new electrical in here. And now we're ready to do a skim coat. With modern plaster, you don't need a bonding agent, which is awesome. The joint compound takes care of the bonding for you and the veneer plaster makes it hard like a normal plaster finish. So we've done the ceiling here. We start with the ceiling, work your way down. Much easier to do the ceiling, fix whatever happens on the walls than it is to try and do the wall, go up on the ceiling and then get drips and drops on your walls and have to come back and fix them. So we're gonna start applying it. I like the plaster, you can see it's a little runny, makes it easier to put it on. It's so much easier on your shoulder if it's runny. If it's thick, it's gonna wear you out and it's gonna set up fast. So you're just gonna jump it onto your Hawk, onto your trout and start down with the mix board. And I'm just slowly I take the hawk, I'll do it slowly for you to see. And I put it like that and then slowly stretch it out. A little bit of it. It doesn't have to be perfect here. You're just trying to get it on the wall. You're going to come back and smooth it out a little bit more later. The knockdown process. So this is just the application that you want. What you want here is a uniform coat. So about an eighth of an inch thick, all the way across. I'm just smoothing it out here to see if I've got a level coat. We'll come back in just a bit, show you when this is ready, when this wall is finished, it's gonna be ready to knock down, and uh, show you that process. All right, so we put the plaster on the wall. We've smoothed it all out. We got a good even coat. There's gonna be some ridges left on the wall. That's totally fine. After about, I'm saying here, today it's been what, 10, 15 minutes. We're about ready to come through and knock down. Knock down process is what you use to smooth out the plaster, finish the, tra the plaster. You can do a trowel finish and that's it. In this case, we're gonna do a trowel and then we're gonna do a sponge float, which we'll talk about in just a sec. But what we wanna do, um, there's some ridges in this plaster we want to get resolved. The sponge isn't going to resolve all that. We're also compacting the plaster, polishing it, making it harder um, so that when it's fully cured, it's going to be a really nice plaster wall. So what you're going to do is just take your trowel again. You let it set up for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. could even be 25 or 30 minutes. It really depends on the temperature, the humidity, a lot of different conditions. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to come through and polish the surface anywhere there's rough spots. You know it's ready to knock down. 
when you put your hand on the wall and you're not leaving fingerprints, it'll still feel damp, but I'm not getting plaster. Come on over here, I'll show you this one. We just plastered this one. If I put my fingers on here, I've got plaster on all my fingers and I left little fingerprints in there. <clears throat> it's not ready to knock down. This one is ready to knock down. So I'm just going to cut through and work in different directions. This is compacting the plaster. It makes for a harder finish, nicer finish. It's taking out all the high spots and the low spots and leveling it up. You're going to get some plaster on your trowel, just little bits. That's fine. That's what it's going to use. It's pulling them off on some of these low spots and it's going to fill it all in. So just work the wall until you get to a point where you feel like it's polished enough, smooth enough. Just bring it back along the whole thing. Lots of, lots of different directions. We showed you how to put the plaster on, how to knock it down with a trowel, and now we're going to do a sponge float. This is uh, just kind of a finishing to get the texture. On a sanded plaster, this works really well. We've troweled it smooth, it's set up, and I'm going to come through. And I'm putting this, I like doing a circular on here, but you can do, you can go straight across however you want. I think a circular helps. It blends in, so you can see a lot of the inconsistencies in the plaster. If we were just doing a trowel knockdown, we would have knocked this down even smoother. Um, but with the sponge float, I use it to get into the, into the uh, plaster, bring out the, the uh, sanded texture, and smooth out all the other issues in the wall. <clears throat> I wish I could use it to smooth out my voice. That'd be nice. And you just come through here, and you're going to get using just a normal tile sponge, you get the smooth side. I like using the rough side, it really gets into there. Keep a bucket of water handy. Rinse it out every couple, every couple minutes. Go to town with the rough side again. Once this is all dry by tomorrow, we're gonna have to come in here and knock some of these rough uh, sand grains that are really pulled up to the top because um, they won't they won't stay on there once we go to prime and paint it. Oops, look at that. You can knock the lid switch off too. I'm just trying to get some of the heavier ones off today. With that, that's how you do a sponge float. Some people call it a turtle back texture. Um, like you can do this all over the place. It's a really good beginner way to get a nice, smooth, consistent texture across there and not worry about some of the divots that show up in the plaster. So there you have it.